The two topics on our menu for the next discussions is narrow band amplifiers and then we will follow it up by wide band amplifiers. What we have discussed so far is uh, the usual uh, bandwidth that can be obtained with RC coupled or other kinds of amplifiers. We shall consider the two extreme cases, very narrow band and then very wide band amplifiers. Today we discuss narrow band amplifiers or tuned amplifiers. <coughs> a tuned amplifier basically is required to obtain a band pass characteristic <coughs> with a narrow band. That is, the characteristic that we desire to obtain is of this type. Is of this type where we uh, characterize this characteristic by means of several parameters. <coughs> several parameters and one of them is the, this is the response versus frequency. This is the characteristic that we want from a tuned amplifier or a narrow band amplifier and to be specific let us say the maximum is put at 0 dB. You can always normalize this, you can always normalize the gain so that the maximum is at 0 dB. The response is characterized by the resonance frequency omega 0. The 3 dB bandwidth, if this is minus 3, the 3 dB bandwidth, which is usually denoted by B, capital B, and in addition, there is a third parameter that is used in practical circuits which is the minus 30 dB bandwidth that is when the characteristic falls down by 30 decibels from the maximum. This is denoted by capital S. Okay? These are the three parameters that are used. Now suppose I have two characteristics, one is this black line and the other is the blue line. Look at this. Suppose I have another characteristic like this. Obviously, the blue line is a poorer narrow band amplifier. Although the bandwidth, 3 dB bandwidth is the same, the blue line represents a poor quality narrow band characteristic than the black line. And that is why this bandwidth is important, the 30 dB bandwidth. And usually, one defines a parameter, one defines the following parameters. One is omega 0, <coughs> the other is omega 0 divided by B. This is called the selectivity of the response, selectivity of the response. Also, sometimes called the Q of the circuit, sometimes called the Q of the circuit. As you know, Q is defined for a coil, for a condenser, for an element. That Q is also defined for a circuit by the ratio of the omega 0 to bandwidth and <coughs> the ratio of S to B, the ratio of S to B is called the skirt selectivity. It is a measure of the slope of fall at the 3 dB points. It is a measure of the slope of fall. Obviously, this slope. Have I made a mistake? Okay, S by B. Do you want S by B to be high or low? Low. So it should really. It's a misnomer. It should really be called skirt rejectivity. Isn't that right? But anyway, this is the definition. S by B. S by B for the black uh, characteristic is lower than S by B for the blue one, but the black one is preferable. So for skirt selectivity, you require a low value. For omega 0 by B, this selectivity you require a high value. There is a slight contradiction here. <coughs> but anyway, what we, uh, for a few hundred kilohertz to a few hundred megahertz, 
such a characteristic is obtained by a tuned circuit, an RLC tuned circuit, and a very simple tuned circuit. We shall consider tuned amplifiers of the following class, class A only. We will not consider any other thing. <coughs> class A and voltage amplifier. These are the usual demands in practice. <coughs> One of the examples of a single a tuned amplifier is in the in the IF stage or the RF stage of a radio receiver or a TV receiver. You know, the intermediate frequency stage, you require a tuned amplifier like this or in the RF stage uh, of a radio receiver. <coughs> and the simple circuit is a simple way that you can achieve such a characteristic to bring variety into experience. Let's use a uh, FET amplifier. What you want is, uh, I'm omitting the, the bias circuits. What you want is you have a VI and uh, the load of the drain should consist of a parallel RLC circuit. Let's call this RL, CL and in addition you have to use an inductance L. If I omit the, uh, <coughs> the biasing circuits, well, this is the circuit for a single tuned amplifier. Single tuned because it uses only one tuned circuit. Okay? Now, the equivalent circuit of this would be VI plus minus, then GMVI. I will use this as R. I will use this as C. And I will use an L here. Can you tell me why these are different? Why R is not RL? This R combines RL with small r subscript small d, the dynamic resistance of the FET. Quite so. What is C? C combines CL plus CDS between the drain and source and any stray capacitance that might crop up in this circuit. So, this is the total circuit. And you know that the gain of the stage, it's very easy to see, V0 by VI would be equal to minus GM <laughs> times the impedance of the circuit, which is the 1 by the admittance of the circuit, 1 by R plus SC plus 1 over SL. I can write this gain V0 by VI as equal to minus GM divided by C. If I take C common, then I get 1 by, if I take C common, then 1 by CR plus S plus 1 over SLC. Okay? Yes. Previous slide, yes. Thank you. you don't have a question, or you wanted to write it down. Okay. <coughs> now, you recognize that this is a simple uh, second order circuit. It has, does it have a pole? <coughs> it does. How many? <coughs> Two. And does it have a zero? at the origin, 1, 0 at the origin. So, the pole 0 diagram is this. Are these poles uh, complex or real? They could be. They could be real also, but a real pole does not serve much of a purpose. You require them to be complex, not only complex, you require them to be close to the geomega axis. Okay? Close to the geomega axis, the real part of this pole should be as small as possible. Who determines the real part? the resistance R. The resistance R determines the real part. Now, you want R to be high or low in this case? Wrong. <laughs> you require this R to be as high as possible. If this was infinity, then the poles would have been exactly on the geomega axis. Okay. Now, V0 by Vi, when you put this is equal to geomega, it's minus Gm by C, 
वन ओवर वन ओवर सी आर प्लस जे ओमेगा माइनस वन बाय ओमेगा एल सी व्हिच मेक्स इट क्लियर दैट द मैक्सिमम मैक्सिमम वैल्यू मैक्सिमम मैग्नीट्यूड इज रीच्ड एट द फ्रीक्वेंसी ओमेगा जीरो इक्वल टू वन बाय स्क्वायर रूट एल सी दैट इज व्हेन दिस इज इक्वल दिस इज जीरो एंड द मैक्सिमम वैल्यू इज जीएम आर and the bandwidth b can you guess what the bandwidth is r by 1 by rc it is this this factor which is the bandwidth 1 by cr you must have done this in your circuit theory class but if you have not done it take the magnitude find out the value that which the magnitude is 1 by root 2 and then find that this is the story that is what we have achieved is something like this omega 0 this magnitude v0 by vi magnitude is gmr and if this is gmr divided by root 2 then this b this is b is equal to 1 by cr and therefore the q of this circuit the selectivity which is omega 0 divided by bandwidth is equal to omega 0 cr it is proportional to r the higher r is the higher is the value of q okay i'll not do the algebra because you must have done it in the circuit theory class now the problem where is the problem the problem is that my circuit i drew the circuit as r c and l so long as i can realize such a tuned circuit is wonderful but unfortunately i can't do that what i realize is whenever there is an inductance there is a resistance so this inductance is not a pure inductance it comes in series with a resistance let's call it rs which causes the resonance frequency to change the maximum gain to change and everything else also analysis in the analysis you see you have to you have to put j omega l plus rs instead of rs um, however such inductances are always described or characterized by the inductance and its q parameter we call it q0 at the frequency at which you want to use it now what is q0 omega 0 l divided by rs the series resistance this describes the coil the coil has an inductance and a value of q q is this now it would have been wonderful if this series combination could be replaced by a parallel pure inductance lp and a pure resistance rp obviously in general at an arbitrary frequency you cannot do that you cannot do that okay but at a particular frequency at the resonance frequency this is possible to be done why should we do this because then it eases the analysis i have i i will have the same circuit again if i can reduce it to this form and reduction it to this form is not a very very uh, difficult problem the impedance of the inductor at the frequency omega 0 at the resonance frequency is j omega l plus j omega not l plus rs okay which i can write as 1 over j omega not l then 1 minus rs this is the admittance i beg your pardon this is the admittance y of j omega If I take j omega l, j omega not l out, then I get one minus j R S divided by omega not l. Agree? Which is equal to look at this derivation, one by one minus j by q not. Agree? I can write this as one by j omega not l, one plus one over q not squared, one plus j by q not. all right and 
And if Q naught is much greater than 1, Q naught squared much greater than 1, so even for Q naught equal to 3, this should be true. Q naught squared is approximately 10. If Q naught, Q naught squared is much greater than 1, then the admittance Y of J omega naught is equal to 1 over J omega naught L 1 plus J by Q naught, which is equal to approximately 1 by J omega naught L plus, how much is left here? Omega naught L Q naught. And therefore, LP, this is equivalent to a <coughs> inductance LP and a resistance RP, where LP is equal to L, the original inductance, and RP is equal to omega 0 L Q naught. You can see now that Q naught is RP by omega naught L. So it's proportional to the resistance because we have expressed it in the form of a parallel combination. Yes. Just a minute. We have to go back to the original circuit. What was your question? If I need R as large as possible, why do I insert this resistance? Okay. Any answer? What is this resistance? This is the capital R sub capital D. You require a resistance to bias the FET. And it is that resistance in parallel with the dynamic resistance. The resistance is inevitable. It shall be there. It can be large, but it shall be there. Okay. Now it turns out that uh, in practice, in practice, if the frequency, even for moderate frequencies, let's say if the frequency is one megahertz, if the frequency is one megahertz, then the inductance and capacitance should satisfy the relation LC equal to four pi squared. No, LC equal to one by. 4 pi squared F naught squared. Agree? Right? So, in this case, it is 1 by 4 pi squared 10 to the 12, the product of L and C. A choice, one choice, one typical choice is, let's say, L equal to 3.18 micro Henry and C is equal to 7.958 picofarad. Now, this is usually a very small value of inductance, very small value of inductance. If you want a Q of, let's say, 100, getting a Q of 100 with a small inductance like this is a, is a difficult problem. Also, this capacitance is a large capacitance. If I can reduce it further, it would be to our advantage. The smaller the capacitor, the smaller is the size, and the better is its loss characteristics. Agreed? The higher the capacitor, the higher the capacitor, the bigger is the loss. That is why electrolytic capacitors cannot be used in such circuits at all because they have a very low resistance in parallel. Okay? So, what one does is, if the values that you require are not manageable, then you use a transformer. And the transformer is usually an auto transformer, not the uh, two coils separated by distance. It is usually the same coil which is tapped and at radio frequencies this can be very easily made by taking a ferrite core and winding a coil around it. Suppose and then and then taking a tap let us say from here to here. What you make is a large inductance, okay, of the same Q, and then you transform this to a smaller inductance across this. Agree? The Q is preserved. Not only that, if you make this transformation, then you can use a smaller capacitor across this, 
to transform it into a I beg your pardon. Yes, to transform this into a larger capacitor. Okay. Let's see what these relationships are. Suppose I want to make uh, a tuned circuit like this R, L, and C. I want to make a circuit like this where L is very small and C is very large. I want to use a convenient auto transformer or a tapped coil to make this circuit. I want to use a smaller capacitor and I want to use a larger inductance. This is very common in RF circuits. What one does is the following. One takes an inductance and suppose I terminate in a capacitance C prime and L prime. Suppose the number of turns in this is N2 and then I take a tap. Suppose the number of turns is N1. Then at this terminals, the inductance, inductance that you will see would be L equal to L prime. Yes? Multiplied by N1 by N2 squared. Is that clear? The impedance reflected here, the inductive impedance would be G omega L prime multiplied by the trans ratio whole squared. Therefore, the inductance is multiplied by this. Is that clear? Okay. So, L prime that you make is L N2 by N1 whole squared, which is obviously larger than what you required. Similarly, the capacitance that you see here would be C would be equal to C prime divided by N1 by N2 whole squared, which is equal to C prime N2 by N1 whole squared. Therefore, the actual capacitance that you use is less than the capacitance that is required. Okay? Is that clear? For example, if uh, considering the previous example, 1 megahertz is your tuned frequency, resonance frequency, and Suppose you use a trans ratio of 3, that is, which is equal to N2 divided by N1. Then one can very easily see that you can do with an inductance, instead of 3.18 microhenry, you can do it an inductance which is 9 times larger, that is 28.6 microhenry, and a capacitance C prime which is 9 times smaller. So you can do it 884 power. Can you tell me any other reason why this uh, auto transformer facility would be useful? Any other reason? Suppose the capacitance, you see, while inductance you can fine tune by putting an extra turn or half a turn or a quarter turn, capacitance there is nothing that you can do. It's only standard values which are available. All you, uh, wh what you can do is, what you can do is you take a standard value, then you say variable capacitor, which is called Oh no. Variable capacitor. Variable is a diode. Diode. <laughs> okay. Variable capacitor is called a trimmer. The barbers use a, a trimmer. It has a mechanical control. You see, what what it is is a small parallel plate capacitor. Okay, small uh, a button and another button put a dielectric in between, a metal button and a metal button, put a dielectric in between, okay? Area is variable, okay? So there is a screw at the top which you can uh, drive and vary the capacitor, but it's messy. One would be perfectly comfortable, if it's a fixed frequency, one megahertz, I don't want all this mess, I want a fixed capacitance and therefore an auto transformer there helps. You can slightly change the tap to make this a standard value which is available in the laboratory. Okay? For example, 792 puff. Uh, if I remember, that's a standard value. Okay? Some standard value that is available in the lab. So, an auto transformer is used. An auto transformer is also used if you require to couple a tuned amplifier to a next stage. Let's say,
you have a tuned amplifier whose equivalent circuit is let's say like this some current then a resistance R1 and a resistance C1 and an inductance L. Suppose you want to couple this to the next stage which is a common emitter amplifier. Okay, common emitter amplifier. Obviously, what this will see if you connect it directly then what this will see is a parallel combination of R pi and C pi. Perhaps there will be a CM also. All right. Now, what is this R pi going to do? It is going to reduce the parallel resistance. What, 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 has that, what effect does that have on the characteristic? The bandwidth broadens. broadens, the bandwidth increases, it is a parallel resistance and therefore it changes the characteristic of this tuned circuit. What you would like is a transformer from here to here such that the loading effect on the tuned circuit is as little as possible. So, what you do is instead of <coughs> coupling directly, you couple like this. There is a problem. Okay. You couple like this. You use an I R1. C1, then this inductance you make it into a tapped coil. That is, don't couple the total total inductance, but take a tap here and then couple to the next stage. <coughs> the equivalent circuit, suppose the trans ratio is n is to 1, suppose the trans ratio is n is to 1, then the equivalent circuit, next stage which is r pi let's say parallel C pi. Then the equivalent circuit would be I <coughs> R1 C1 L and in parallel will come what? It will come a resistance which is R pi times N squared. Isn't that right? So you reflect a higher resistance to the tuned circuit and the capacitance would be, what about the capacitance? It will be C pi divided by n square, therefore a smaller capacitance. In other words, the detuning of this circuit would be minimized. You can choose your n. If n is 3.3, .3, then it is 10 times less. If C pi is 10 puff, this would reflect only 1 puff here. So the effect on C1 would be minimal. Effect on detuning would be minimal. So an auto transformer is also used in that connection. <coughs> Any question? Okay. Now suppose you have made a tuned amplifier whose uh, <coughs> selectivity or the skirt selectivity is not of the proper value. You want to sharpen it. You have, a, you have a characteristic like this, you want to sharpen it. Let us normalize the maximum to 1. How can you sharpen it? How can you make it into, how can you convert this into a circuit like this? If you cascade two such stages, if you cascade, if you, if you connect two such stages in cascade, then the resonance frequency remains the same it becomes the, this characteristic will be the square of the other characteristic, which means that wherever there was point 0.9 would now become <coughs> point 0.81 and therefore the selectivity increases. So All right? Increase Could I? Increase R1. There are limitations. R1 cannot be increased beyond, let's say, small r subscript small d. There are limitations. With that, you, ca you do not satisfy the prescribed characteristics, so therefore you cascade to such stages. Or, you could also do this, that use two tuned circuits, tuned at the same frequency, one at the input of the amplifier and the other at the output of the amplifier. 
You can do that. Let's see what this circuit looks like. Is the point clear? You, you may not use two amplifiers, you may use the same active device, but a tuned circuit at the input and a tuned circuit at the output. Let us see what this circuit looks like and what is its problem. I am going to draw now a typical RF amplifier circuit. <coughs> And then I shall discuss what the problems are. This is infinitely large. You want to use a tuned circuit as the load. So you have L2, C2, and the losses R2 plus VCC. This R2 is, may not be externally added. It might be simply the losses of L2. You know that L2 will be a series combination of L2 and RS2, which can be converted into L2 parallel R2. And then this is your output, some coupling capacitor, which is infinitely large, V0. At the input, let's look at it as a current amplifier, that is the GM VI, perhaps of the previous stage. At the input, we use a parallel circuit C1 L1. I do not use a resistance, that resistance will inevitably come from the uh, from this circuit. So, a coupling capacitor which is infinitely large. Then I have the biasing arrangement, some resistance Rb1 and if you want it to be AC open, then you use an RF choke here, you use an RF choke here also, so that RB1 parallel R2 does not load L1, and then you have RB2 to ground. The problem in such cases, in such amplifiers, is this inevitable small <coughs> capacitor which causes Havoc, C mu. R pi, C pi can be taken care of, can be taken care of. R pi will contribute to the damping of this uh, tuned circuit. C pi can be combined with C1, but what about C mu? One may argue that C mu can be reflected as a Miller capacitance at the input. How would you reflect? Because this load is no longer a purely resisted load and therefore what will be reflected is not a pure resistance but it would be resistance and reactance, all right? And therefore this will totally detune the input tuned circuit, agreed? Worse still, you see, if you have it, if you have this characteristic, the output characteristic like this and another characteristic let us say like this. If they don't, if the two resonance frequencies do not agree with each other, then you are actually widening the bandwidth. Isn't that right? And therefore, C mu plays havoc. Sir? Yes. Sir, at the resonance frequency, the two circuit will have a. Ah, at the resonance frequency. Now, it is not an oscillator circuit. We have to accept a band of frequency, <coughs> and therefore, you can no longer consider this as a pure resistance. Okay? You have to consider around this frequency where L2, C2 both come into effect. I was expecting this question. While in an oscillator circuit, a single frequency oscillator, we could do that. We could take the resonance value, but not in a narrow band, not in a tuned amplifier. But there is a band of frequencies involved, so the reactances have also to be considered. Worst problem is that you see that this is nothing different from a Hartley oscillator. Isn't it right? A Hartley oscillator has a capacitance and two inductances. At a frequency, when this behaves as an inductance and this behaves as an inductance, it might oscillate. And this is usually what happens. Whenever you want to make a tuned amplifier, it usually oscillates. It's a, it's a fact of nature. And therefore, the joke is, if you want to make an amplifier, make an oscillator. <laughs> it will not oscillate, it will amplify. If you want to make an, make an amplifier, uh, I'm sorry, if you want to make a oscillator, oscillator make an amplifier. Okay, that's the joke. But this is a real problem. 
and there is a lot of effort which is RF design is much more difficult than audio design or low frequency design. Okay? So what one does is one tries to cancel the effect of sinew and this process is what is known as neutralization. It is a standard practice in RF amplifiers. You have to do something, you have to do, you have to make some efforts to neutralize the effect of sinew. Okay? And <coughs> The neutralization, can you suggest a very simple method of neutralizing this? Short it, then the collector will be shorted to base, no amplification. No amplification. Yes, very simple minded procedure. At a negative capacitance, where do I get that? The storekeeper will call you crazy if you ask for a negative capacitance. What is that circuit? Okay. One of the simple-minded procedures is add an inductance in parallel. But uh, you cannot add an inductance in parallel because the DC will go haywire. So, complication. You have to use a blocking capacitor here. You see? C mu, C mu, if you want to neutralize its effect, you have to have a CB, which is very large, then an inductor, a small inductor, and at 100 megahertz, a piece of wire would do. A piece of wire, a straight piece of wire has an inductance. That would do. So making this inductance is not a problem. But what is the problem is that this inductance should be such that the impedance of this is approximately infinity, not only at omega zero, but around this. In other words, in other words, this is a very critical adjustment. Nevertheless, it is done. How it is done is the following. Since an inductance tuning, a small inductance, tuning a small inductance is a very difficult problem. You have to use a core and the core has to be adjustable and things like that. So what one does is take the available nearest value of inductance, connect it. Then obviously C mu well, we cannot adjust it, CMU is internal, but we can always either, we can always increase its value by using a trimmer, CT, and adjusting a trimmer. A trimmer adjustment is much easier than an adjustment of an inductance. Okay? So this is a simple-minded procedure, but people soon discovered that it has its own limitations. With age, things change, transistor parameters change and the circuit which worked wonderfully on the 23rd of March, on the 1st of April it starts oscillating. <laughs> okay. So this neutralization is, has very limited application. What one does is one uses circuits in which neutralization is not required. Can you mention a circuit in which C mu can play no havoc? Miller effect is absent. Can you mention a simple transistor circuit? Hmm? FET? FET has C, G, D, which plays have work again. It's a role, plays the role of C mu. No, no. Pardon me? The common base. That is the answer. That's what is said. Okay, then you are correct. A common, a common base circuit, let me look at this. If the base is common, which means the base is grounded, then C mu is simply connects from collector to ground. Okay? And it does not, it simply comes in parallel with the load. The load has a capacitance anyway, so it cannot affect. Is that clear? So, what one does is, two possible circuits. One is a CC CB cascade. Okay? Two transistors are used. As a common collector stage is cascaded to a common base. Now in a common base, C mu comes in parallel with the load, so there is no Miller effect. Why a CC? What is what is the Miller effect in a CC? 
okay c mu what is the load in a common collector <coughs> zero and therefore 1 plus gm rl is 1 and therefore c mu reflects as only c mu all right so a common collector common based cascade is a very popular method for increasing the selectivity of a tuned amplifier the other thing the other one is a cascode stage a cascode stage is one have we discussed this earlier no a cascode stage is one in which one transistor sits upon another okay this is a cascode stage one transistor sits upon another what happens to c mu of this what is the effective load? What is the effective load that this transistor sees? It's not R pi. No. Effective load. This transistor, the collector, sees what load? It's not R pi. R pi divided by? Beta. Because it's the emitter current. So R pi divided by beta, which is equal to 1 by Gn. Okay? And therefore, C mu reflects as 1 plus GM RL, which is 1. So, C mu reflects as twice C mu. That's all. It cannot reflect as 100 times C mu. So, the, the effect of C mu is contained. <coughs> it's made as small as possible. What about the other one? What about this one? What is the effect of C mu? This is a common base. And therefore, it comes in parallel with the load. But, um, in this case, the upper transistor also has capacitance. <coughs> upper transistor also has capacitance. Which one? C pi? C pi. Okay. No, C pi comes as C pi times. Yes? Does it come that way? R pi by beta? Oh, it comes as beta C pi. It comes as a large capacitance. Right? Large capacitance has very low impedance. <coughs> and therefore its effect its effect on C mu is the negative. Okay? This is called a cascode combination and, and next time we will uh, discuss these two circuits qualitatively and then go into broadbanding techniques. Mm -hmm.